This week, FDA advisors gave their approval for more COVID-19 vaccines for children, as we reported at the top of the hour. The panel approved Moderna's vaccine for kids ages 6 to 17 months after giving Pfizer its approval. And just yesterday, it gave the thumbs up to both companies for their shots for children under the age of 5. If everything moves forward, vaccines could be available next week. We're hearing as early as Tuesday. Joining me now via Zoom is Dr. Mobin Rathor, a pediatric infectious disease specialist at UF Health. Good morning, doctor. Thanks for being with us. Can you hear us, Dr. Rathor? Yes, I can hear you. Thank there you, Jen. Good morning. Oh, good morning to you. Would you explain how the Pfizer shots work? Let's start with that and the effectiveness. Well, uh, Jen, these, uh, this is not just Pfizer, but also the Moderna shots. They work in a ma manner that is very similar to what we already know, the vaccines that are being used for children, older children and adults, for which millions of doses have already been given. So the mechanism how the vaccine works is the same. Uh, the only difference is that the dose is a little bit less than what we give adults and older children. Uh, so, so it involves two, maybe even three doses, uh, you know, over a certain amount of time, very similar to what adults have been able to receive. That's correct. Right now, the vaccine is approved for only for two doses. Boosters are not yet approved for uh, children. Of the, and it, it's going to be a little bit longer because the studies are ongoing to see how safe and effective the boosters are. We know that with two shots, the vaccines are very effective and safe. Uh, and I think this is a time that we have vaccine available now for all children because all children need it and deserve it. And now with the vaccine being available uh, six months and older, it's going to be a terrific news for everybody. We still have to wait for AC, the CDC to make its uh, final recommendations. I know you've been conducting studies. Other hospitals have been conducting them as well here locally involving children. Have you seen and have you heard about any potential side effects associated with either <coughs> of these vaccines in this age group? Yeah, nothing uh, unexpected. You know, as you know, that even adults, when we, when I got my vaccine shot, you got some local pain, uh, you know, maybe a little swelling, some redness, you know, a little bit of fever, usually uh, first 12, 24 hours. That is to be expected. We see that with many vaccines. Those are local infections, but we really didn't see any serious uh, condition as a result of this vaccine. And also uh, the studies, uh, patients who were uh, participating in the studies, other parts of the country. And as a result, because the vaccine was seen to be safe and was safe, seen to be effective, the FDA uh, obviously recommended that the vaccine be uh, approved for children, younger children. So I, I know that early on in the pandemic, there was this discussion about the fact that you don't have to worry about vaccinating children because they don't get very sick. I want to point out that the CDC says that more than 440 children ages four and under have died from COVID since the beginning of the pandemic and hospitalizations among that age group have actually gone up during the Omicron surge. Given that, what is your message? Because there are parents who still may be hesitant who have these young children. What is your message to them if they are on the fence about getting their baby or toddler this, this vaccine? Yeah, unfortunately, there is so much misinformation. Children do get the infection, children do get sick, and unfortunately, children do die of this uh, serious disease. So I think it's extremely important that we uh, give the vaccine to all, to all children who are eligible because the vaccine has been given to millions of people and it's safe, and we know it's effective. So I think uh, also it's important that all children get uh, vaccinated so that as the population in general gets vaccinated, we'll finally be able to get rid of this pandemic. So uh, even if the younger children, those who do not get a serious infection, they can sit, still get this dreaded MISC, the disease that you see uh, four months when uh, up after uh, four weeks after the uh, initial infection. And the infection could be mild or even asymptomatic. So I think it's important that you protect your children for having that serious consequence, which they can die, affects their heart. Uh, and also don't forget kids still get COVID long. And if I get COVID long, I may have another 10, 15, 20, 30 years to live with it. A eight year old may have to live it for 70 or 80 years. So I think we, we cannot be have a very nonchalant attitude about, oh, it's okay, kids don't get that serious, let them have the infection. That's not good. We need to protect our children just as you protect our children from everything else bad. And just very quickly, doctor, you know, Florida missed the deadline to pre-order these vaccines, which could be sending a mixed message to <coughs> parents about its effectiveness and its safety. 
Do you know if it will be difficult for families here in the state because Florida missed this deadline to get these vaccines for their babies and toddlers? Well, I hope that we are able to get the vaccine still. You're correct. This is a terrible message. And I think it's unfortunate that rather than trying to protect our children, we are not even making an attempt to get the vaccine so it can be available to everybody. Don't forget the, va- the people who are going to suffer most, the children who are going to suffer most are the children who, are, who need it most are the underserved communities uh, who have already have so many barriers. And we have, as we have seen all along this pandemic, it is the minority population, the underserved communities who have borne the brunt of this disease. And if the children do not get the vaccine, unfortunately, that will still happen. We need to be sure that we care for all children and protect all children, including those who are underserved and all the minority populations. So I think this is really bad for the state not to have uh, pre-ordered the vaccine. I think it's a terrible decision. I think it's going to hurt our kids. And frankly, the uh, kids are still going to get sick, hospitalized, and even die of this if we do not do what is so important, which every other state has done. So, you know, that tells you a lot uh, where Florida stands in protecting children, unfortunately. Dr. Moby Rathor, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.